Hello. Um, right, lightning talks without the S at the end, just the one. But I'm Giles. I hail from King's College London's Department of Digital Humanities, which is a, a strange thing for a, a former material scientist to do, but as needs must. I, it, I'm on holiday, but I'm here representing the Our Data Ourselves project. Um, some of that entails getting a bunch of um, teenage, young, rewired state volunteers and giving them smartphones and looking at the, the data trail their, um, their Android phones leave behind. That's another story, which um, you can see on Sunday at uh, about half past, half past noon, assuming I'll get the slides written. So that's the... That's the advert, but the other end of the project, which is the other end of the data show we leave behind, we're going to come from the other direction and look at some social media analytics. And there's going to be a tiny bit of maths, but I guess we haven't all massively been to the bar yet, so this is the time to get it to get the, the get the maths in. So assumption, um, your various social media networks are a little bit tribal. There will be people you know from work, people you know from various social contexts, etc., etc. So we're going to represent your Twitter network as a graph. And we're going to say, because you're all, we're all a little bit tribal, there are going to be nodes on that graph that are more densely connected to each other than everybody else. Assumption. I wish I had a nice big pointed stick, but never mind. Assumption the second, if you start somewhere on that graph and take a random walk around it, you are more likely to stay within your given tribe, your given cluster, and you're more likely to stay within the cluster in which you, in which you started. Now, do, for instance young rewired state teenage hackers, are they more tribal and have more segregated follower networks than your middle-aged um, middle-aged Python dev? We shall see. But to try and find these, these clusters, these networks, we're going to use a technique called MCL. Here comes the maths. We're going to start with a really trivial network, two, two nodes, a, node A has a self-loop, and B just has a, a link back to, uh, back to node A. And we're going to draw a matrix to represent that. So 1 means there's a link, zilch means there isn't, so A links to itself and to B, B links just back to A. We're going to normalize the columns to get the probabilities of hopping around that network, so the columns were sum to 1. So if you're in A, 50-50 chance you'll stay in A or hop over to B. If you're in B, by definition, you must hop back to A. That's all you can do. That's how we've set up our trivial, trivial graph. Here comes the science bit. In order to work out the probability of being in a given node at some time, all you have to do, <laughs> all, going back to high school maths, is square the matrix. So you do it once, multiply the matrix by itself. Well, if you started at A you've got 50% chance of hopping to B, and this, then if you're at B, well, it's a certainty you'll hop back to A. So you've got... Uh, if, you, if you're at B, you must be A the next, uh, the next hop, and you left A in the first place with the probability of 50%, so that's 50%, and another 50%, if you started at A, you've got... Uh, 50% chance of hopping away to, to B. So after two hops, you've got a probability of three quarters of being, a, of being in A. Clear as mud. Uh, the, getting, the, getting the quarter for uh, staying at A, if you started at, staying at B, if you started at A, is um, left as an exercise to the, to the viewer. Aha. Uh -huh. So to take it as red, you multiply the matrix by itself, you get the updated probabilities for being in a particular node. Then you cheat, or rather you over-dramatize the, uh, the probabilities. You square them. 
this time on a, an element-wise square. If you square a number that's less than 1, which it is because it's a probability, it's going to get smaller. The smaller it is, the smaller it's going to get. So you stretch the probabilities. So after two hops, we've gone 9 tenths to 1 tenth, and B is still 50-50 split. So if you started at A, you've got... we've over-dramatized, we said we've got a 90% chance you'll still be at A, and only one-tenth chance you'll still be at B after two hops. So you keep doing that until things stop changing and you get convergence. So you're going to get a load of uh, zeros and ones in your matrix. And if you look at a given row, and you see which entries in that row are ones, that'll be, given that I'm in this particular node now, which of the individual elements are credible starting points? If I'm here now, after convergence, where is it credible I started from? And that is going to define your cluster. So let's try it out. My learned colleagues, two of them, they've got about 7,000 once removed friend follower relationships, and we're going to apply this MCL algorithm to it. And we're going to test it. Now, the, I guess what you test against is the sort of popular open source network stroke graph analysis program, Gephi. So Gephi will have lots of nice layer options for your graphs. And there is a particular layer option called OpenORD, which is supposed to emphasize clustering. And Gephi has its own clustering algorithm called the Louvain method. So what we'll do, we'll cluster with MCL, cluster with Louvain, and see what they look like in Gephi's layout that emphasizes clusterings. Louvain method, probably can't see too well, but all the clusters, or rather all the clusters that are, or rather the nodes that are close together are all pretty much of one color. So the layout that emphasizes clustering has put clus nodes in the same cluster together. MCL, oh dear, looks like an explosion in a paint shop. Oh, it didn't work. Who's convinced by that? Who have I fooled by going, here's two GIFs, two nice uh, graph visualizations, and oh, well, fair dues, this one's got all the colors in nice, neat cluster, so that method must work. Well, let's have a, li a little sanity check. I ask, why did Louvain do this? Because this is Dino Pony, co-owned by my other half, he's probably sitting at the back somewhere. And this is William Bennett. Dino Pony, I think he, he mostly likes apples. William Bennett likes harsh electronic music and a tal disco. What? on earth did Levain do putting them in the same cluster? Something's probably a little bit wrong with the Levain method. Ask the researchers to rate the clusterings for both methods, Levain and MCL. If you can, if you look at the list of people and go, I know who these people are, and I can identify the context that they've got in common, give it top marks. The other I guess the other uh, classifications aren't really that relevant. Bear in mind that sort of 7,000 next nearest neighbours, so they don't really know very many of the, of the individuals in that extended network, but one in five of the MCL clusters, they'd be like, oh, people I know from this university, people I used to hang out with in or during X. So there's a, there's a context. Levain, not one single cluster, generally pretty random looking. And the nice thing about, about MCL is that even I can implement it. Now, why did Gephi's method go so wrong? I don't particularly hate on the Levain method or, or Gephi because I wrote neither of them. Elephant in the room is that MCL took 10 minutes to run on my little box and Gephi clusters that makes the clusterings in a matter of 20 seconds. But the vein is too clever by half. It tries to slowly build up smaller, sorry, larger clusters from smaller ones. But given that the degree of Twitter networks is so huge, if you pull in 
one, uh, one Twitter account that you shouldn't, you pull in all their friends and followers as well, and if you make a mistake early on and there's no way to break that clustering, you're stuffed. MCL, on the other hand, it's so dumb, it doesn't even, it's not even aware of what a cluster is. All it is is updating a table of probabilities, and we interpret those as clusters. So I've seen that sort of do the, do the um, Levain method or do the uh, informal um, layout method working quite well for other other um, humanities type data, but when the degree of the network is much, much, much less than that of Twitter. One good example was um, a graph of um, which Egyptian scribes had which customers in a, in a particular town. So, shout out to the tools, Twyflin, Celery, Redis, RabbitNQ for acquiring the Twitter data, store it in Neo4j, turn the handle and do the, the crunching with NumPy, and... Uh, Geffy did do the pictures. Nice Python library, Network X. Any questions? Or oh, rotten fruit. That probably was somewhat more than 10 minutes. No, I think we're good. Don't need silence. <laughs>